The holy office is not infallible in itself. This is important to know because modernism and heresy, especially on salvation, started to percolate in the teaching of theologians and members of the Roman congregations before Vatican II. That's one reason that Vatican II happened. We also find the trend toward modernism in the instruction of the Holy Office on the ecumenical movement issued on December 20, 1949. That instruction declared it permissible for Catholics and non-Catholics to pray the Our Father together at meetings and conferences. That's another example of how the Holy Office is not the same thing as the Magisterium. The official teaching of the Magisterium is free from all error. Acts of the Holy Office and Roman congregations are not. We bring these facts out because many so-called traditionalists have constructed a pseudo-magisterium that consists of selective statements from fallible theologians and other non-magisterial sources. They attempt to assign to these things an authority or a protection or an infallibility that they don't possess. In the process, they deceive and corrupt the faith of various people. These points are extremely relevant to the case of Father Leonard Feeney, for many people falsely claim that the Church condemned Father Feeney's teaching in 1949. They are so wrong. They are referring to the alleged Holy Office letter dated August 8, 1949, called Suprema Haec Sacra. But what they don't tell you or don't emphasize is that this alleged Holy Office letter, which is filled with modernism and error, was approved in common form by Pius XII, not in specific or solemn form. It was also not signed by Pius XII. As a common form Holy Office letter, it's not infallible, and it can be rejected if it contradicts something of greater weight, which it definitely does. This video is not about why Pius XII, who allowed modernism to grow in various ways, approved the letter in common form. It's about the Holy Office and Roman congregations. Even someone like Monsignor Joseph Clifford Fenton admitted that Suprema Haec Sacra was not infallible. Furthermore, the alleged Holy Office letter, Suprema Haec Sacra, dated August 8, 1949, wasn't even promulgated in the normal fashion. It was never published in the Acts of the Apostolic See. Thus, it's true to say that it was never officially published. Instead of the Acts of the Apostolic See, it was published in the Pilot, the news organ for the Archdiocese of Boston. Indeed, when it was initially published in the Pilot in 1949, it wasn't even published in full. It was only published in full in the Pilot three years later in 1952. It's really a piece of trash modernist document. In reality, it's a pseudo-Holy Office letter. It also became the foundation for the modernist rejection of the dogma outside the church, there is no salvation. The entire purpose of the letter was to give cover to the modernists who wanted to silence and condemn Father Feeney for preaching that non-Catholics must be converted to the Catholic faith to be saved. That's why at about the same time it was published in Boston, a New England paper ran a typical headline that stated, Vatican holds no salvation outside church doctrine to be false. That was the effect of the modernist pseudo-Holy Office letter, Suprema Haec Sacra. It was written in response to the modernist heretic, quote, Cardinal Richard Cushing, a man who called the dogma outside the church there is no salvation nonsense, and became a benign brith man of the year. Father Feeney was having a lot of success converting people by preaching the absolute necessity of the Catholic faith for salvation, just as true Catholics in our day, who hold the same position, have success in converting people that far exceeds other groups. The heretic Richard Cushing silenced Feeney and put his group under interdict because they were preaching Catholic dogma and converting people. Cushing was upset that Father Feeney was boldly telling non-Catholics that they won't be saved unless they convert to the Catholic faith, so he complained to Rome. What Cushing received in response was the modernist letter he was looking for. Sadly, most of the priests in the years just before Vatican II had fallen into heresy on salvation. Vatican II didn't happen overnight. Decades of errors and even heresies, infallible sources especially on salvation, led to it. The modernist document Suprema Haec Sacra was the pre-Vatican II culmination of that process. This video is not about the errors in Suprema Haec Sacra, it is about the Holy Office and Roman congregations. We have covered the facts on this. So, when people run around and act like the irregular, common form, supposed Holy Office letter Suprema Haec Sacra is a definitive act of the magisterium, they are just deceiving people. They don't understand the proper role or authority of the Holy Office or the distinction between it and the Magisterium and the Chair of St. Peter. Suprema Haec Sacra was a fallible letter written by a modernist, and it must be rejected because it contradicts the teaching of the Chair of St. Peter. In response to these facts about the fallibility of Roman congregations, some argue that although the Holy Office decrees are not infallible, they are absolutely guaranteed in every case to be safe. Their claim is false and they have no magisterial support for it. It's true that the Holy Office sometimes would declare a doctrine safe or unsafe, but if that act is fallible in itself, there is no ultimate safety in what can be erroneous. It's true that laws of the Catholic Church, which have been promulgated as binding upon all by the supreme authority of the Church, are necessarily safe, but this does not apply to fallible Holy Office acts. 
Indeed, if something can be mistaken, unsound, and erroneous, then it can contain error that is opposed to the faith. There is no absolute and guaranteed safety in embracing error. On this matter, we recently had a brief exchange with the Sedevacantis priest who was ordained by Donald Sanborn. The priest's name is Damien. We asked him if he agrees with Donald Sanborn that souls can be saved in false religions. He refused to answer the question. And if someone is saved who is in those false religions, it has nothing to do with that false religion. It has to do with the grace of God and their ignorance. The idea that souls can be saved in false religions is, of course, a heresy that contradicts defined Catholic dogma. He wouldn't answer the question because he's sadly a heretic who holds the same position as Sanborn and similar priests. In our exchange, Damien admitted that decrees of the Holy Office are not infallible. Not infallible, yes, he wrote in 2019. He then argued on the same day that there's no way you can go wrong following them. So according to him, a Holy Office decree is not infallible, which means that it can contain error, but there's no way you can be wrong following it. Of course, that is self-refuting nonsense. Such contradictory claims emanate from people who attempt to defend a false position and labor under a false understanding of church teaching. What they are confusing is safety with a diminution of culpability. Someone who follows the error contained in a fallible act of a Roman congregation or some other approved work, sincerely believing that its Catholic teaching isn't absolutely safe, but he or she could very well have diminished or eliminated culpability until it's clear to that person, from some fact or a teaching of greater weight, that what he or she thought was the correct position is not. Those are the true principles about the Holy Office and Roman congregations.